Let's go live to our correspondent, Nicholas Hark. He's joining us in from Marrakesh. What's happening where you are, Meg? Now, joining me now is Abu Idris from Birmingham. He's a tourist that was stuck in Imlil, which is the epicenter of where the earth, uh, earthquakes um, striked. Now, what happened to you when that happened? Well, we were just ready to get into bed. It was just past midnight, and all of a sudden, we heard the most horrific banging and sounding noise, which is sounds that I cannot even explain. And the whole building was shaking, and then... They say it lasted 50 to 20 seconds. But well, while we were going through the ordeal, it seemed like it was going on forever. And screams and everything. But alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah, the building did not drop, which allowed us to leave out the building, alhamdulillah, in safety. And everyone evacuated, went out onto the streets. But, alhamdulillah. But that happened on Friday, and it took you two days to come to Marrakesh. That's just 75 kilometers away. Why did it take you so long to come back Because here? of the ordeal of what happened there on after. Immediately, all of the electricity was cut off. There was no internet coverage. You couldn't call anyone at all. It was just darkness. And all of the roads up to Imalil, the Atlas Mountains are thin, windy roads through the mountain, past huge rocks, but, uh, such huge rocks that I can't even explain the size, blocked all of the roads. So nothing came into Imlil and nothing left Imlil for two days. Now, what's happening in Imlil before you left? Are people trying to rescue people in the rubble? Well, Imlil, in the area where we were, the, bu the buildings were intact, there were only cracks. But if you went down 17 kilometers, when we came down finally from Marrakesh, it was horrific sights. Huge boulders of mountain rocks were falling down. Azni is the most hit area. I plead to all the people that are listening to this message now, if you can aid and help the people of Azni and around the outskirts, their buildings and houses have all fallen down. They're on the streets and they are in need of help. And their the houses are in rubbles now. Uh, Abu Idris, is there anybody there to help the population? There is, alhamdulillah. The government of Morocco are sending huge amount of aids Alhamdulillah, up into that region as well. We saw that on the way when we was coming down. We ourselves, an organization from England and Birmingham, CC Dawa, are also now are in the stages of helping them and sending people over and help and aid as well. And what exactly do people need? People at this moment now, they need um, blankets, they need shelter because they're not staying in their homes. Even the homes which have not fallen down, people are too frightened, as you can see now here. They don't want to stay in their buildings because there are after effects as well. There are tremors that are coming after. So people are frightened to stay in the buildings, especially in the Azni area. They are in need of tents. They are in need of food. And likewise, they are in need of blankets because it's very cold in that Atlas region. Now, had you anticipated when you went out there in the mountains for, for holidays that it would be like that? Describe to us what Imlil is like. Imlil normally... For anyone that does not know, Imlil is in the Atlas Mountains close to Tuktal, which people go there for trekking um, excursions. Very beautiful area, beautiful greenery, waterfalls. So it's normally very quiet. The people are very nice and it's very, very calm. They've never, ever experienced an earthquake. This is their first earthquake. And, and what does it look like now? Imlil is not that bad. Apart from everyone in panic, it's further down. Imlil, 17 kilometers in Azni. It's like almost, if you want to describe, like a war zone. Abu Idris from Birmingham, thank you very much. You're catching a flight, flight back. Flight back tomorrow. tomorrow. And I would just like to say to the people, remember your Lord, for verily, it was only a few seconds. And look at the damage that has happened. It's a wake-up call for everybody. Remember your Lord and your Creator and turn back to him in prayers and pray for our people that are going through this difficulty. Abu Idris, thank you very much.